7th of January already. I'm Reverend Dr. Marta Burke. Those that are tuning in or watching for the first time or those that we have visitors here, we have as well as for our heaven's sake praise team. And yes, Reverend uh, Kathy Nolasco and Reverend Diane Gutierrez this morning. I first want to ask, does everybody have a bell? Okay, if you haven't gotten a bell, I hope you get one. Yes, it's not, we're going to ring in the new year, but it's, it's a symbol and a sign as throughout our church, our Christian history, that bells were rung to gather people to worship, as well as those special moments in the life of the community and in the world. And so we, again, are going to embrace a tradition of ringing in the new year with one another, but coming to worship as we begin this new year, the first Sunday. Also, you will be coming up for communion today. And when you do, we have the baptismal font. And uh, Reverend Gutierrez will be there and give you a shell, another symbol of baptism. But you will remember your baptism and be placed the water on your forehead or on your hand, whatever you prefer. But it's, again, the traditions and the rituals, but also the meaning of worship and those symbols that we begin this new year with. Do we have any first-time visitors? Come on, we maybe have one or two. Okay, we've got a job for us. We bring friends, family, strangers, so that they can know the love of Christ and worship together. We ask you to fill out the Connect cards, please, 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 because we found that so much of our information, uh, phone numbers are changed. Those that are watching, please go and let us know, too, on the website, and you can uh, text us, email us, so we can make sure. And then, of course, the Connect cards. Fill those out and place those in. You can give us the updated information during uh, the offering as well as as you go out today. All right. Let us breathe in the breath of God of this new year and let it fill us with life anew as we begin the grounding of Christ in our lives. Good morning and happy new year to everyone. Welcome, welcome to worship our first of the year. Let's stay together, shall we? My name is Steve. I believe in Jesus Christ. He's my personal savior. I know him well and he knows me like no one else. I follow him, I listen to his voice. I try to be a part of his plan for this world. He's alive, he's reigning, he's working. He's making a difference in this world. And it all starts in worship. So this morning, we're just going to praise and lift up his beautiful name, his wonderful, powerful, powerful name, the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Let's do that together.
bells ring those bells but don't hit, get comfortable because it's time to greet our neighbors with the peace and the love of Christ in this new year
know about your household, but the household here at Plantation United Methodist Church is off and running. And we begin this, uh, this new year with Grounded, a new sermon series. We want to make sure you don't miss it. For the next four or five weeks, we'll be looking at how we are grounded in our spiritual walk. So don't miss it. And just to mention, as we worship next Sunday, we have our district superintendent, uh, Reverend Dr. S uh, Simon Solana, that will be here and bring us the message of peace with justice as we celebrate Human Relations Sunday. And yes, Martin Luther King. So don't don't miss it as we meet our new district superintendent. I also, I have an announcement that I want, it was given permission to share. Our previous associate pastor and district superintendent, Cynthia Weems, is engaged. She is engaged to get married this next year, and she is so excited, and she told me I could share it. So we give God thanks for that. Pastor Kathy. Yes, we want to also let you know that tonight our um, youth programs come back. Um, and so we have our youth choir that will meet today at 4 to 5, as well as our youth group will have its first meeting of the new year, 5 to 7. And so uh, with our new youth director, Miss Latina Lightborn Newsom, leading. So all youth are invited and encouraged to come tonight to one or both of those events um, so that we can um, reconnect. Youth is 6th grade all the way up through 12th grade. Finally, we are starting a men's Bible, like I shouldn't say starting, restarting our men's Bible study. Uh, this time it's called Delta Force, and this time it's going to meet on Monday nights um, right here. I think it's at the church. It right? is. At it the is. church at 7 o'clock. Um, Steve Blessed uh, is going to be leading it. So all the men are invited. If you are looking for connection and Bible study and growing with other men, please consider doing that. If you'd like more information, reach out to Martin and I, and we can connect you with Steve Blessed with that information. All right, it's time for the children's moment, but this time I'm going to invite the kids to give their bells to their parents. So, and their parents will bring your, you will get your Let's bell at the end of the, the service. Bells. Let's I ring promise. the as they come up. What? Let's ring them as they come up, as they give their bells to their parents. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. I'm not, and actually, we're going to have our children's moment up here today. We're going to do things a little different. All right. We can actually sit right here for now. All right. Good morning, guys. How are you? I'm going to sit down right next to you here. All right. Can you look at me for a minute? All right. Well, maybe st I'll stand up. Okay, hi, how are you guys? Come on up. Okay, well, good morning, boys and girls. How are you? You have an offering, Savvy? Here you go. Happy New Year! Are you excited for school tomorrow? No, you're not. Well, that's all right. So, today, when you guys are in Sunday school, all the big kids out here are going to do something that we don't do that often, and that is we are going to remember our baptisms. Does anyone here know if you've been baptized? Leo, you were baptized. Some of you were, maybe some of you weren't. Maybe you, maybe you should ask your moms or dads when you go back to your pews if you've been baptized, when you see them later if you've been baptized. So today, we are going to remember. Now, many of us in our church, in the Methodist Church, get baptized when we're little. She just got baptized a few weeks. Well, it seems like a few weeks ago. It was more than that now. She just got baptized, and we're baptized when we're babies. And do we remember things when we're babies? Often not. So it kind of, now some people get baptized when they're teenagers or when they're adults. We can baptize folks at any time in their lives. There's no right or wrong time to get baptized. But um, so when we're baptized as babies, though, sometimes we think, how can we remember it? Because we don't remember it. We don't remember when we were babies. Um, you know, and so I want to actually show you a picture of my baptism. Can we see that picture? It should be the next slide. There we go. Everyone look at the screen. That's my baptism in 1984. And you know which one I was? The little baby in my mom's arms. See that? That was me. And that was the day I got baptism, baptized at the church I grew up in, in Davie. Yeah. And so I don't remember that exact day. But my, parent, my parents show me this picture, and they remind me 
that even though you don't remember the day you were baptized, you remember that you were baptized. And that's what's important, remembering that we're baptized. Because when we're baptized, when we're baptized, God, it shows that God loves us. It shows that God chose us. And it shows that even before we could make a decision to follow Jesus, that we are Jesus' children. That's what baptism, God's children, that's what baptism is all about. So I'm going to read you a story today. You guys want to listen? It's from the Bible. It's really short. It's about the day Jesus got baptized. Did you know Jesus was baptized? But he wasn't when he was a baby. He got baptized when he was older. He was a young man. And this is what it says. One day Jesus came from Nazareth. That was the town he was from. Kind of like you are from Plantation or Sunrise or where you're from. So one day Jesus came from Nazareth. And John baptized him. Do you think he baptized him in a church? Where did he baptize him? Not a lake. In the river, in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. You ever heard of the Holy Spirit like a dove? And then a voice from heaven, that's God the Father, said, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. When we are baptized, God is claiming us as his daughters and his sons, and God is showing us that he loves us so much. Come on up, Hannah. And so later on in the service, the grown-ups are going to come up here, and they're going to touch this water, uh, maybe touch their forehead or their heart, And they'll probably take a shell as well. They'll probably get a shell. Um, And that's going to remind them of their baptism. And it's going to remind them how much God loves us. Now, I know some of you have been baptized. Some of us haven't. But we are going to come up to this font. And we're going to gently put our hands. This is our baptismal font. This is where we baptize babies. We're going to gently put our hands in the water, if you want, and remember how much God loves us. That sound good? All right. I'm going to call these four up. Come on up. Come on, touch this water. Remember that God loves you. Can you touch it? Good job. Then you can touch your heart or your forehead if you'd like. Yes. Mm-hmm. Good. No, you're not going to take a shell. Parents are invited to take a shell for their child later in the service. All right, next group. Yes, sit down. Come and touch their mother. Remember how much God loves you. You are God's children. There are shells, yeah. Come on up. Yeah. Remember that God loves you. That water reminds us that God has claimed us. All right. You ready to pray? All right. Oh, come on up, sweetie. Who who has to come up? Avi, you want to come up? You want to come and touch it? You don't have to if you don't want to. Want to stay there? That's fine. Want to touch it, Jadine? Reminds us that God loves us. All right. What do you think? You like it? All right. Now we're going to pray. Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for this water that reminds us of your love and your forgiveness. Even before we knew you, you chose us. May this water remind us of your great love and of your call on our lives to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. There, there's Daddy. It's time for Sunday school. All right. Hey, sweetie. Happy New Year. Let's stand together, shall we, as we prepare for worship. Our Lord Jesus Christ is is powerful, he's real, he's relevant, he's alive and working in this world today. It's known that he is the author of creation and all things were created through him. But the most powerful thing that he has done, the most incredible thing, 
is to take away the sins of the world by sacrificing his life. We have to remember that as we go into this new year, to this new world, into this new time, that we go fresh, that God has forgiven us. He's forgiven us our sins and put them away. The Bible says that our sins are as far away from us as the east is from the west. So this morning, we're going to celebrate in worship as we realize that our sins and our shortcomings are gone.
Jesus, even in those moments in the upper room, surrounded by your best friends, your closest comrades, you wanted to be near them. You wanted them to know your heart, to know who you were. And even though the message you were trying to tell them was just lost on their lost hearts, you never stopped trying to connect and to draw them in draw them closer. And so on this day, we celebrate that same moment when you set the table, and drew them in, and invited them to your inner circle, opened your heart, and began in, even in those moments to pour out your life. So Father, when we remember the incredible sacrifice, the incredible gift that Jesus Christ brings to this broken world, we know that we can be healed and, and made whole. So our hearts do not need to be heavy. We do not need to bow with worry and regret. Father, you are there in every, mo in every moment in our lives. Restoring, encouraging, and building us up all to the worship and service of your Son. And we praise this morning. You 
You may be seated. I want you to take this moment as we continue to be in prayer. Whatever is in your mind right now, what are you going to have for lunch, the laundry you have to do, do you have enough gas in your car, or those bills that need to go out, or those telephone calls, hold it right there. Open up your mind and your heart and let God come in. Let us pray. God, there is joy in our lives and there are moments we don't even know it. The breeze that blows around us or the rain that falls or the sun that peeps through the clouds the moment that we hear a voice over the telephone. Oh God, we ask that we listen to your voice of love and grace, that we don't miss it, but that we celebrate it. God, we come to you in the midst of joy and of heartache, of uncertainty and fear and anxiousness as well as peace and centeredness. God, we celebrate those that are engaged like Cynthia, those that are having birthdays this week, those that are celebrating anniversaries, those that are, that are starting a new job, or those, yes, teachers and students and administrators that are going back to school. And yes, Lord, the parents that are glad they are. But we also are in the midst of those that are struggling with cancer those that have lost loved ones over the holidays, and those that have scheduled those celebrations of life. Those, oh God, that we listen to over the television or read on our phones. Those that have died because of gunfire. Those that have died because of bombings in the midst of war. Those that have died or that are marred because of hate. Oh God, bring your love. Let us realize that your love is there waiting for us and your grace. God, we ask that you surround this church and the individuals that are here today, those at home and in this world, that we may lift up and live your grace and love. And for this church as it begins its new year, help us, oh God, to do your will. Help us to be financially responsible. Help us to do your ministry of, of, in this community and in this world. Help us to see and listen to your call that through our baptism, through the breaking of bread and lifting the cup, that we will hear your word 
and be grounded. Oh God, hear our prayers, clear our minds, and open our hearts. To your will we pray. Amen and amen. As our ushers prepare to enter the room, I invite you to ring your bell as we continue our worship. You're invited to put your Connect cards in the offering plate, as well as your gifts of um, your tithes and offerings. You're also, if you haven't been able to turn in a commitment card for 2024, you can turn that in any time in the offering plate, or you can mail it or drop it by the church office so that we can um, plan and prepare um, for this year um, as a church family. Let's pray together. God, we are thankful for the opportunity for a fresh start for a new year. And we are here because we want to start this year focused on our faith, growing in our faith, connected to you. And so we offer these gifts that we are about to give, these gifts that we might give online. We pray that you would multiply them and use them for your glory. Guide those who make decisions and leadership in our church regarding all of our church's finances. And I pray that you will be glorified and your love will be made known within us, but more importantly, within this community, so that they might know you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 1. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized, to show that they were changing their hearts and their lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, he ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I is coming after me. I am not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the Spirit, like a dove, coming down upon him. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. Grounded. When I first began to think about what it meant to me, it was a memory. It was a memory of my parents' voice that said, Girl, you are grounded for coming in late on Friday or Saturday night. I thought about that. And then the second image or memory for me was when that lightning storm came and hit close to our house, and I thought to myself, Oh, God, I hope we're grounded and we won't catch fire. But then I look at the oak trees that are in our city here, our home here at Plantation, and I look at the roots and the trees that cover and shadow, and yes, even the, the roads that we travel down, those big trees with those roots that are grounded deep. 
I wonder how grounded they are. And then I ask myself, and I ask you today, how are we grounded in our faith, our spiritual journey? How are we holding deep, diving deep with the roots of our spiritual walk? And that's what we will be talking about and, and struggling with and questioning and celebrating as we look over the next four or five weeks on Sunday mornings, that we will look at those elements of our lives that where we are grounded. And today we look at the grounding of our baptism. Yes. I know that the past four or five weeks we have been surrounded with the Christmas story. I bet you all could tell it just with, and the shepherds came and the angels said and the, and the wise men and, and they went to Bethlehem and couldn't find a place to live. Yes, we know those scriptures and, and we know that in the gospels that they're filled with those collectively. It isn't till later in most of them and all three of them that that we hear about Jesus' childhood. But Mark's gospel has nothing about the Christmas story. But I'm here to prove that wrong today. Mark is off and running in his gospel lesson. He begins with Jesus' baptism. Jesus is a grown man when he first introduces in the first chapter. He is being baptized by his cousin, John the Baptizer, is what we call him, John the Baptist. Mark's gospel is bringing that moment. Yes, I call it that God came into the world through Jesus, through his baptism, claiming him being the Savior, his beloved. That is even not in Bethlehem in a manger, but in the river of Jordan, where the gospel says, God has given us his son, the Savior of the world. It may have not been a baby, but it was a grown man being baptized. So do you see? It is a Christmas story, but it is a story of you and I and the promise that we are God's beloved children. The passage that I, I see that speaks to me again and again, you are my beloved son and in whom I am well pleased. When he was in the water and being down in the water, he heard the voice of God speaking to him, speaking to him clear as day. I wish I could have been a, a fish in the water to see that and, and to experience that, that those that were there. It was that moment, that declaration, just as, as Jesus was born in the manger, he became the savior of the world as he was in the water. I like Mark, even though he doesn't tell the traditional Christmas story, but it's a new way for us to say God is ever-present in so many different ways. But we need to be grounded in our understanding of that being beloved. It is not just that Jesus is beloved, but God is telling us through Christ that we are God's beloved. And yes, God is well-pleased. I'm like, maybe God didn't see the late night I stood out or, or that I skipped coming in and crawled through the bedroom window or at least tried to. Or maybe, yes, that, that I didn't study for an exam because I was out late the night before. Or, yes, that I hadn't been honest with myself about who God created me to be. We are God's beloved. I wish today I had a mirror for each of you to look into and believe it and then live it because it is through our baptism as Jesus' baptisms that God calls us through Christ to be his beloved, God's beloved. Now, that's great for Jesus, right? So what does it mean for us? What does it mean to be baptized or to be God's beloved? Well, get ready, because this is what it's all about. As we begin this year, as how many remember your baptism? Okay? I don't remember mine. I, as Kathy, I've got pictures of my mother and father that showed me this is what you, we did that day, and that my godparents that were standing there, the merits, 
And I even, I didn't even know my godparents till later on in life, and they brought out the picture and showed me. And the baptismal dress, that was the antique that was handed down that my, my mother wore, my sister wore, and I wore. By the time I wore it, it was falling apart. Memories. But it's not just memories. It's not just what's in here, but what's in here. Amen. Amen. Uh, baptism, as I call it, two-sided. It's one that is a spiritual as well as that of, of a evangelical or a evangelism moment. You're saying, what in the world is that about? We baptize children. We don't christen them and we don't dedicate them in the United Methodist Church. We christen, we christen boats. We dedicate buildings. But baptism is a sacred moment where God claims us as God's beloved. But it's also, no matter what age we're in, whether I know that I baptized my husband when he was almost 52, maybe 50, anyway, long and short of it, we can be baptized as infants, we can be baptized as young people, we can be baptized as adults. It's about God claiming us, but also that we claim that we will be God's beloved and will be free and begin again, broken and, yes, healed through our brokenness and forgiven of our sins. So that we see it as a holy moment, a ritual of being accepted, but also that we are called to be in this world. There's a, a question at the first of a baptism when we ask parents or we ask adults that will you live in a world to bring justice and peace? And it's kind of odd. Why would that be one of the first questions? It's because we are called to bring the beloved God and that to all God's people. It's not just about you. It's not just about me. It's about that we are all God's precious people. Those that are even baptized, they are God's precious people. And that's why I ask every week, did you bring somebody to church? We are called to bring those to Christ, to bring so that they may know the love and that they are beloved. We are called Yes, to believe that we are God's beloved and bring others to Christ to be God's beloved also, claiming that. But then we go and move beyond that and grounded. We claim not just ourselves, but others to be beloved. John the Baptist, yes, or baptizer, he called those to be baptized to be free of sin. Well, how many of us can forgive ourselves on the first go around. How many of us say to God, I'm sorry, but do we really forgive ourselves or others? Are we free from sin? We have to work at it. We have to learn how not to make mistakes again or a way of living. One of my dear friends in Miami, Cleveland Bell, was a severe alcoholic for many, many years, and he worked day in and day out, and as he became clean, as he became a spokesperson for the homeless and a spokesperson for Salvation Army and was free of the alcohol, not of the addiction because it was still with him, but he said, it is in every moment I decide not to take a drink. And some days, it's in every breath that I take. But I am reminded, he says, that I am God's beloved. It is a journey that we need to repent and, yes, know that our baptism is a way that we can touchstone that and be reminded. We believe in the United Methodist Church that once you're baptized, you don't have to do it again. But then you have to live it out. That God gets it right the first time. We are God's beloved. And that, yes, we can remember, as we will today, our baptism that will be before us. We then need to know that our baptism is something that is not just for us, but for the whole world. I know that I think about my neighborhood and my neighbors. 
I've invited some of them to church, and they said, we just can't get up that early. I said, it's okay, you can watch us on television. <laughs> but I know that as my neighbors had a party that went till two in the morning, I had to say, okay, God, I love them. As I held my dog through the firecrackers that went off until two in the morning on New Year's Eve, I held them and said, I love my neighbors. There are those moments. We are to love God's world. Our baptism is in ground and grounding in us that we are to be God's light in this darkness. We, we talked about it all last uh, during Advent, but now we have to live it that God's baptism, a beloved, is for all God's people, for you and for me, and yes, that person that's walking down the street that is homeless. The person that is on TV that has a different political view than I do, they are God's beloved. But it's not easy. We have to be grounded in that understanding of our baptism that God is with us, and God has called us, and then we must live out that grounding of our baptism in the world. We do it collectively. We have baptisms we believe that we need to have in, in a worship service. Now, I've done baptisms in the river. I've done them in my backyard and in the pool where we've had a small group of folks, but I've invited them to say, bring your family and friends because this is a witness and a testimony of your life and of your spiritual walk. And to know that we also make a covenant as a church, as a family of God, to support that individual and to be there with them. You say that every time we have a baptism. So do you believe it? Are you grounded in it? Are you sh supporting one another? Are you loving or, or caring for one another? like we should. Now, it's not just in, as my mother made casseroles and brought upper rooms to folks that were sick. That, that was important back then. But maybe it's just being a listening ear. Maybe it's the ministry we have with our Stephen ministers, folks that are active listeners, or those that you take them to the doctor so that they, when they get the news, good or bad, that they can share it with someone. Maybe it's just texting to say, I've missed you. I hope you're okay. That's where it begins, but it doesn't end there. We are called, you and I are called to serve God, to be grounded in our baptism, and that we will then begin to live it out in this world. We have two baptisms, maybe three scheduled in the next few months. One in February, one in March, of infants, of children. But it's those parents, those grandparents, those godparents, it's you and I that are making that covenant, grounding ourselves that we will care for them and bring them up into this world, knowing God's love. I want you to do something for me today. No, not for me, it's for you. I want you to write that scripture down on their bulletin, put it on your phone, write it on your hand, I don't care. But say, yes, I am God's beloved and he is well pleased with me. Think about it. When you look in the mirror, when you open your eyes tomorrow morning, you are God's beloved. Yes, our Christianity is a matter of believing it. Our Christianity is a, is a matter of living it out. Our Christianity and our spiritual walk, not just in this new year, but every year that God calls us to be grounded, to deepen our roots, to stretch them out in places that we would never even imagine. God's calling us to be the church and the individuals, the beloved of God, in a new way right now. Yes, we may have to let go of things of the past and be ready for what God holds for the future. It's scary. It's exciting. This last week, I was surprised. I got a, a text message from our district superintendent. <laughs> I was the first time I've gotten a text message that wasn't personal from a district superintendent. It was talking about the business of the church. And he said, I ask you to pray, because I know that you will. As well as Charlene, uh, um, excuse me, not Charlene, but, but Cynthia, she called and said, I've got great news, I'm engaged. 
I celebrated with her as I've known her as a teenager and a pastor and a friend. We must be grounded and grow and deepen our roots in knowing that we are God's beloved. I would challenge us, just as Jesus came out of the water, that we should be jumping in the water with him to hear the words of God. Are you listening to what God is saying to you? Or are we becoming deaf to it? Have you heard the message of what God has called you to do? Or are we becoming numb to it? Are we grounded so that we can believe that we and this world that we live in is God's beloved and God is well pleased? Well, it's time to believe. It's time to be grounded. Let us come now and break the bread and share the cup together. And let the people say, Amen. 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 I invite those to come to help serve communion to come up with us today. Jesus gathered with his beloved, those friends, those disciples, and with God, and said, this is my body, after he gave thanks, that will be broken for you, because you are my beloved. Yes, broken. Broken so that we may know that as we are broken, we can be one with him. He said, take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him. Likewise, he gave thanks again. He lifted the cup to those in that upper room, and he said, this is my blood that will be shed for you, for a new covenant, a new way to live, and to be God's disciples is before us. So take and drink and believe. So now we come and receive. The ushers will show you. As, you, as they come down the aisle. We have our special offering today, which is for our Samaritan fu- our fund that helps those individuals in our, in our church family that are struggling financially. But also we invite you to receive the blessing of the water, the baptism, remembering it, and be grounded, for you are God's beloved. Let us come and receive. Let me go ahead. Feast and remember your baptism. like to get the individual cups, just let us know when you come up, and we will give you those.
given new life, we are grounded. We are grounded as we remember and now live out our baptism. Let us stand and praise God as we worship not just here in our pews, but in the world, giving God thanks for all that God has given us. go out these doors and know that you are God's beloved and that we are grounded in God's pleasure in us and that we must love and show the grace to others in this world. Remember your baptism and ring those bells so the world may hear of God's love. Amen. <laughs>